This video explains how to convert a data frame column of a pandas data frame from the string data type to the integer data type. So without too much talk, let's dive into the Python code. In this video, I will show you several examples and for these examples, we first need to import the pandas library, as you can see in the first line of code. And then we also need to create an example data frame, as you can see in the second code box. So in these lines of code, I'm creating a data frame called data, and then I'm printing this data frame below the code box using the print function. So as you can see, after running these lines of code, a new data set is appearing below the code box, and this data frame contains six rows and the three columns x1, x2, and x3. Now, if we want to check the data types of these columns, we can use the dtypes attribute, as you can see in the third code box. So below this code, you can see that all the columns in our data frame have the object class, which stands for character strings. However, all the columns in our data set contain numbers. So for that reason, it might make sense to convert some or all of these columns to the integer data type. In the next example, I will show you how to convert only one of these columns to the integer data type. And for this, I'm first duplicating our data set because I want to keep an original version of our data frame using the copy function. So after running the first line in the fourth code box, a new data frame called data new one is created. And then in the next step, I'm converting the column x1 of this data frame to the integer data type. And to achieve this, I'm using the sType function. And within this function, I'm specifying the data type integer. So after running these lines of code, our data frame is updated and we can see that by printing the data types of all the columns once again using the dtypes attribute. And as you can see, the dtypes of the columns in our new data set, data new one, are different compared to our input data frame because this time the data type of the first column has been changed to the integer data type. We can also change the data types of multiple columns, and this is what I want to show you in the next example. So as in the first example, I'm first creating a copy of our data set, and this time I'm calling this copy data new2. And then I'm using the sType function as in the previous example. However, this time I'm specifying multiple columns within the sType function. And I'm specifying that all of these columns should be converted to the integer data type. So after running these lines of code, our data set is updated and we can see that by using the dtypes attribute once again. And as you can see, this time we have changed the columns x2 and x3 from the string to the integer data type. We can also change all the columns in our data set from the string to the integer data type, as I will show you in the next example, starting in the eighth code box. So as in the previous examples, I'm first creating a copy of our data set, which is called data new three. And then I'm applying the S type function to the entire data set. And as in the first example, I'm specifying the integer data type within the S type function. So after running these lines of code, a new data set is created, which contains only the integer data type for all of the columns in this data set. So in the first three examples, I have explained how to use the sType function to convert the data types of our data frame columns. However, it's also possible to use the toNumeric function, as I will show you in the last example of this tutorial. So as in the previous examples, I'm first creating a copy, and then I'm changing the column x1 of this new data set, data new4, to the integer data type using the toNumeric function. So as you can see, after printing the dtypes of this new data set, this time we have changed only the first column to the integer data type. However, the other two columns have been kept as character strings. 
That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.